Um, so that more or less concludes the conference. Um, and I think just to, I want to give Corey um, five minutes at the end to um, give you some information on the Penn Project. Um, but I just wanted to say one last thing. Um, I think we all have a niche and I, th I think some people find that niche early on and others find it later on. Um, and I think there's a huge fraction that, that never find that niche. And I think those are the people that find themselves behind bars. Those are the people that find themselves in extremely unhappy situations. And I think throughout all of the work that um, people shed light on today um, shows that it just takes a little bit of care and concern to let that person um, kind of come into themselves, come into themselves. Um, and indeed, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, you'll, you'll be frowning. Um, here's Dr. Wells. Um, first of all, I just want to thank everybody who presented today. It has been phenomenal for me. I have been engaged. I got three hours of sleep last night, and I stayed awake during the whole thing, and I loved the whole thing. And um, we've heard from so many kinds of uh, educators and so many kinds of point of view. Um, I, I, also, I began my comments this morning by reading something from uh, a student in Florence. Um, and I'd like to end by reading a couple of things by a, an incarcerated writer in our pen project in Globe. Um, the pen project is how I got into uh, this whole thing this whole education system. I got into it in 2011, and I was just amazed by it, and I kind of fell into prison education. I don't really know anybody in prison. I, I didn't run with that crowd. I, I had no background to be in it, but my sense of justice was just so assaulted when I began to see who was in prison and, um, and how it has zip codes, and it has colors, and it's just wrong and on so many levels, and that we don't live in a nation of equal opportunity. Maybe it's because I'm the daughter of an immigrant, um, albeit you know, a European one. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me where somebody comes from. They're, they face challenges. So um, anyway, this is a poem that was written by last semester, and I think this is probably who I would have been before I kind of fell into prison education. I would have had this point of view or uh, under, you know, I would have been one of the people who was accused in this in this poem, I guess, really. Um, this, this young man, he's still quite young in my view. He, he's going to get out when he's 35, and he thinks his life's going to be over. And I'm saying, well, I'm 64, so I'm not thinking your life's over when you get out. But uh, he certainly will face challenges I never had to, you know, for housing and jobs and, and all kinds of things. But he's, he's just a lovely person. and. Um, this poem, and he, and he came up to me after a workshop one day and he said, I just keep wondering what if I had found, what if I had found the pen project years ago? And I said, well, you found it now and here we are. So uh, because his teacher kept begging us to come up and it's so far nobody wants to go there every week. So we, we, go, we try to go once a month and sometimes we make it once a month, but it's more like three times a semester. But um, anyway, this is the poem. It's called The Forgotten Ones. We are the forgotten ones, the lost ones, the broken hearted ones, the all or nothing ones, the I could have been something ones. We are the dangerous ones, the full of anger ones, the I ain't playing ones, the damaged ones, the savage ones, the die for my homie ones, the die for a 40 ones. We are the feared ones, the too filthy for you to come near ones, the guilty ones, the derelict ones, the I've forgotten what it's like to care ones. We are the ugly ones, the shameful ones, the hated ones, the damn right I'm hateful ones. We are the lonely ones, the if only ones, the too late to be sorry ones. We are the haunted ones, the make it stop ones. We are the unforgiven ones, the I would give a pound of flesh ones, the all that's left is death ones. 
the I've spent my breath ones. We are the forgotten ones. And whether it's because, you know, we've forgotten about, you know, where they live or, you know, they're, uh, anyway, there are so many ways to be forgotten and, and, and as, as the speakers have so eloquently said today. But then about two months later, he turned in this one. This is the same young man. This one's called Kindness. Be kind to the unkind. They need it most. Their hearts are like orphaned children, sleeping in wet streets, curled up, cold, under bridges, parents long gone, dead from needles in arms. Let kindness be to them a mother's warm hands, a mother's tender kiss, a mother's loving embrace. And when the unkind commit the unforgivable, forgive them. Give them a kind of unforgettable miracle, kindness. How awful kindness is, the unkind will say. How dreadful goodness feels, they will grumble. When they do, give them a smile as wide as the evening sky, as warm as August nights and big city lights and concrete streets ablaze by summer days. Smile wide and warm for the unkind. And I, I think that's what we're all trying to do and can do better. Uh, as we are able to. And I thank you all for being part of this endeavor. Thank you.